Welcome back. So we are in our module on a machine learning primer, and we're breaking down the different types of machine learning and what goes into training a machine learning model. So I want to dig a little bit deeper into these different broad categorizations of what types of machine learning there are and what kind of factors go into choosing if you're doing a supervised classification problem or an unsupervised clustering problem, things like that. Okay, so um, this is a very broad categorization, and you'll notice that the kind of large dichotomy is between supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised means that your training data has labels of the things you're trying to predict with your model. Unsupervised means you don't have labels of the things you might want to predict with your model. And I'll point out that there is this large kind of nebulous gray area in the middle between uh, supervised and unsupervised learning. And in fact, this is where a lot of the most exciting research is happening is in this, this middle kind of semi-supervised area, things like reinforcement learning, generative models. Um, and so I'm going to dive into these different classifications. Really important point, oftentimes nowadays machine learning has become synonymous with neural networks, but you'll notice that in each of these subcategories of things you could do for each of these types of machine learning, it's not like there's just one big bold lettering that says neural networks all across all of these categories. There are many, many types of machine learning model for classification or regression or reinforcement learning. Some of them use neural networks, some of them don't. It depends on your problem. Okay, so let's dive into kind of diagrammatically how do we think about this dichotomy of models here. So machine learning always starts with a kind of system you're trying to analyze that is gener generating data. So we have a system, um, for me this might be you know, a wing that I'm modeling in a computer you know, simulation environment, and the training data might be the lift and drag on that wing, something like that, okay? So you have a system and it's generating data, and the different dichotomies of what types of machine learning algorithm you get to use depend on the nature of this training data. So for example, if the thing I want my model to predict is part of my training data, if, it is, if I have labels on my training data that, that have not just the input data, but also the thing I'm trying to predict with my model, which I call a label, if I have a labeled truth, if the answer is yes, then I'm doing supervised learning. This is a whole category of machine learning called supervised learning, where I'm trying to build a model to re capitulate a known labeled truth on my training data so that in the future I can deploy that algorithm on new data and it will give me similar labels um, as if it was labeled by an expert human. If I do not have access to those labels of what I want my output to be, then this is an unsupervised machine learning task, and this is much more like data mining. So supervised learning is more like trying to mimic or automate an expert system. Unsupervised learning is more like data mining. I'm trying to learn patterns from my data that I can then use to build models um, to analyze future data. And then let's just zoom into this supervised branch for a little while. Then I ask myself the question, if I do, yes, have labeled training data, now I ask, is my label, is the thing I'm trying to model on the output, is it a continuous or a discrete variable? And what I mean by that is, is specific. So by discrete label, I mean um, if I'm trying to classify between dogs and cats, that is a discrete categorization between two classes of objects, dogs and cats. That's a discrete label. And those tasks, supervised learning with discrete labels are called classification tasks. I classify between dogs and cats or between person A and person B. If my label, if, if the thing I'm trying to model is a continuous variable, like the lift on an airfoil, which can be any numerical value, um, presumably, then that is what's called a regression task. I'm trying to regress to a continuous variable, like the lift or drag on an airfoil. <laughs> 
And those regression techniques, there's lots and lots of algorithms for regression. There's linear regression, logistic regression, uh, Gaussian processes, and so on and so forth. And so this is the main dichotomy is, do I have labeled truth data or not? For example, in that example of uh, lift and drag, if I had a bunch of simulations of different airfoils, and I also had the lift and drag for those simulations, that would be labeled, so I'd be doing supervised learning, and I have a continuous label, so it's a regression model that I'm building. I would be building a machine learning regression model to predict lift or drag from future airfoils. If I had that uh, labeled training data for dogs and cats classification, I had a bunch of images of dogs and cats, and I knew which ones were dogs and cats, that would be supervised learning. And my model has a discrete label, just dog or cat, and so that would be a classification task. Similarly, if I take this other large path where I don't have labeled data and I'm doing unsupervised learning, I have the same question, is my do I believe that the structure in my data is discrete or continuous? And the way I think about this is if I kind of imagined plotting all of this data, even if I don't have labels, if I plot all of this data, does it live in discrete groups or clusters? Or is it kind of continuously spread out in a distribution? If I believe that my data lives in these discrete clusters, then my algorithm would be called a clustering algorithm. I'm going to try to learn the clusters that the data lives in. And for example, if I had a bunch of images of dogs and cats, but I didn't have labels, I forgot or I lost my labels, I could still run it through this algorithm and use a clustering algorithm maybe to learn that there is a large group of objects that are you know, correlated with each other, and another large group of objects that are correlated with each other. And I might, in fact, learn that there is such a thing as a dog and a cat. I wouldn't know which one's called which. You'd have to, to choose the names of these clusters. Similarly, if I believe that my data is not living in these distinct groups, kind of these clusters, but rather there is a distribution of data, that would be called an embedding problem. So, uh, this one is a little bit uh, more nebulous and there's not as well agreed upon uh, nomenclature for this. I call it embedding. Sometimes you just call this data mining in general um, or distribution learning. That's another way to say it. So for example, if I had a bunch of um, data of flow fields from, from you know, different airfoil geometries, but I didn't have the lift and the drag, I might believe that that data is still going to follow a continuous distribution, and so even if I didn't have labels, I would still be doing this continuous embedding to learn the structures of those flow fields from data. So those are the big uh, two dichotomies. Is your data labeled or not? That tells me if I have supervised or unsupervised. And is my label, uh, if, is my distribution, is my data or its label continuous or discrete? That'll tell me if it's a regression or a classification or an embedding versus a clustering algorithm. Cool, that's the main uh, thing to remember here in the types of machine learning. And there is this uh, very important middle ground that's becoming more important every day if I have partial labeling, partial uh, labeled training data. And this can mean a few different things. It can mean that there is a larger label that I want to estimate and I only have some of the numbers of that, like maybe I only have the lift but I don't have the drag or maybe only a fraction of my training data has labels. Maybe only 20% of my data has labels. That is also a type of partial measurement. And there's many, many other ways you could have partial labels or partial measurements here. And this is called semi-supervised, and it's kind of this nebulous uh, middle ground between these two. And here, the dichotomy is not necessarily discrete or continuous. In my mind, it's more, am I just trying to model the system or am I also trying to modify the system? Because in a lot of cases, I use machine learning models to then try to manipulate the system for some kind of a control objective or an optimization objective. So if I'm only trying to model that distribution from uh, this kind of semi-supervised partial labeled data, those models are generally called generative models. So GANs uh, fall under this category. Things like um, deep fakes are essentially generative models based on partial labeled data. 
If I want to modify my system, if I want to actually interact with my system and change the system for some engineering objective, that would be, for example, something like reinforcement learning. And generally speaking, that involves a feedback signal that actually takes the output of my algorithm and then modifies the system and changes how that data is being generated in, in closed loop. Okay, so this is kind of an advanced but very exciting area of machine learning where it's really at the intersection of machine learning and control. You're actively modifying the system for some uh, objective and you're also building models of that system as you're collecting data and modifying it in real time. Um, and then you, know, you can also have this model or modify dichotomy here in supervised learning. So for example, if I just want to model the system, that's the classical machine learning we talked about before. But if I want to modify my system, I can use those same algorithms for optimization and control. And so reinforcement learning I think of as being kind of a partially measured version of classical nonlinear optimization and control algorithms. Again, this is not a hard dichotomy. This is just something I have found useful to kind of straighten things out in my head. Some of these lines are blurred depending on what algorithm you use. But the main headline here, kind of if you want one key takeaway, this is the main canonical picture of machine learning, is that you have supervised and unsupervised learning, and you have discrete or continuous labels or discrete and continuous data, and that determines the kind of four major types of tasks that we typically think about in classical machine learning, things like classification, regression, clustering, and uh, embedding or distribution learning. And then there's this kind of fancier stuff you can do in the middle with generative models and reinforcement learning. Okay, good. So again, notice I have not drawn a neural network. I haven't really even talked about neural networks. Many of these tasks you can solve with neural networks. Many of these tasks, there are lots of other powerful machine learning algorithms you can also employ depending on what kinds of data you have and what your objectives are. So we'll talk about all of that uh, coming up. Thank you.